All right, so this is gonna be a quick rundown of key things to know from chapter six, which is on cell structure, um, basic organelles and their function. Um, key things that you wanna remember for this chapter is essentially what is a cell. Uh, really, there's two characteristics about being prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Remember, prokaryotes are much simpler, uh, only reproduced by things like binary fission. Eukaryotes are gonna have those. Uh, key things is having a membrane-bound organelle which basically means that it has its own membrane surrounding it. That's one of the key things that I think they like to trick you on the AP test. But um, key thing is uh, they have to be able to reproduce on their own to be it, make it a characteristic. So um, key things about all cells, whether it's prokaryotic or eukaryotic, is they all have to have a plasma membrane. Um, and that's what chapter seven is about in terms of letting things in and out. Um, but a couple of things about the plasma membrane is that they do have a phospholipid bilayer. Uh, so remember, you've got your polar head and your nonpolar tails. Um, so in terms of that, that's going to make up your cell membrane. And it is selectively permeable. Uh, typically, things that are nonpolar are able to pass right through. Uh, if you need a larger molecule like a protein, that's going to need its own receptor protein. Um, but other key characteristics that you want to differentiate between prokaryotes like here uh, versus a eukaryotic membrane is in terms of the chromosome, uh, the DNA in eukaryotes uh, is going to be linear. And for prokaryotes, it's circular. Um, but regardless, they're both made up of DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid. Um, and they also both have ribosomes. And again, ribosomes are the key thing uh, to help make proteins and protein synthesis. Uh, ribosomes are a little bit smaller in prokaryotes than they are in eukaryotes. Um, but regardless of the cell type, they all have a plasma membrane and these other characteristics. So uh, regarding the size, uh, prokaryotes are quite a bit smaller than eukaryotes. But again, the key things is going to be how they reproduce, uh, having these membrane-bound organelles. Um, so this is a nice little compare and contrast chart uh, on the prokaryotes versus eukaryotic cells. Um, so in terms of that, this kind of just hits the point uh, that if it is a prokaryotic cell, um, it has just a circular chromosome. It also has tiny circles of DNA. Uh, we can kind of add those in. Those are your plasmids. Uh, and remember, we did that lab not too long ago. Um, a couple things that I am not seeing on this slide is how do they reproduce? Um, remember, prokaryotes are going to reproduce by binary fission. And for these eukaryotes, how do they reproduce? They're going to reproduce by mitosis or meiosis in terms of sexual selection. So in terms of other key characteristics about this uh, that I want to talk about, whoops, um, would be in terms of the actual structure of these prokaryotic cells. Um, one key thing that the AP test likes to trick you guys on is uh, remind you guys that these prokaryotes do have a cell wall. Um, a lot of people get that confused and they think that plants are the only cell type with a cell wall, uh, but also remember that prokaryotes do have um, cell walls. Um, other key things is going to be the ribosomes. Uh, remember the ribosomes aren't membrane bound, so that means they make proteins, but those proteins that these things make are going to stay within the cell itself. Uh, whereas eukaryotes, uh, depending on where those ribosomes are, they can kind of uh, be shipped out outside of the cell or just shipped out to the membrane itself. Um, so moving forward, uh, one of the key things that uh, the College Board makes you guys make sure you're able to understand is the surface area to volume ratio. Uh, remember that the larger the organism, they don't have larger cells. Uh, they just have more cells. Still, cells stay small to increase the efficiency. So in terms of this, you just would take the surface area, whatever that formula would be, you would, they would give you that. You take the surface area, whatever that is going to be, and you divide that by the volume. Um, so, and again, one thing that's going to help like increase the surface area, uh, an, an example of this would be the mitochondria. That inner membrane, all that folding is going to help increase the efficiency of that organelle. So, um, moving forward in terms of the genetic material of a eukaryotic cell, you got the nucleus. Um, key things about uh, the definitions here. Uh, ones that I want to make sure you guys feel clear on is the chromosome structure versus chromatin. Remember, chromosome is when it's really, really condensed. And chromatin is when it's essentially loose. 
uh, the nucleolus is where your ribosomal RNA is made, and that's going to help make up your ribosomes. And again, about the ribosomes, that's where protein synthesis uh, occurs. So just kind of fixating on a couple of key things on this. Um, I think a lot of this should be some pretty simple review for you guys. Um, but the one thing that I do want to take some time and talk about here is the endomembrane system. So in terms of the endomembrane system, let's kind of emphasize a couple of key things here. Um, first and foremost about the endomembrane system, I like to kind of remind you guys what is the point um, of the endomembrane system. Uh, and the key point about this is just to ship proteins outside of the cell. or to get that protein to the cell membrane, right? So this one, uh, these little purple spheres are representing, I, I guess the protein they're trying to show and they're showing that this protein is leaving. But I also wanna remind you guys that uh, that protein is also gonna be, or I should, excuse me, I should say, this process is also gonna be used if you're making a receptor protein because if this little thing I'm drawing right here, if that is your protein, it's not just gonna randomly find its way to the cell membrane. So uh, a couple of things about this that uh, I wanna revisit for you is kind of the sequencing. Um, I do wanna remind you that this is in eukaryotes only. So just kind of remind you guys the sequence here. Uh, you have your DNA, which is inside the nucleus, that DNA, is going to be transcribed into your messenger RNA, right? And again, we can kind of add to this because now we've kind of covered this in, uh, in when I had you guys in class. Remember the mRNA, if it's in a eukaryotic cell, we can actually cut out sections like the SNRPs and the splice, SNRP it and splice it. Then the mRNA is going to leave and then it's going to go to one of these little brown guys, which these things are representing of a ribosome. And... That ribosome is going to be where the protein synthesis actually is taking place. You're building the primary structure of your protein. Um, and this whole thing right here is your rough ER, right? So all of these ribosomes uh, are going to be on your endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, so remember, the rough ER is where your proteins are getting made and those proteins are getting shipped out. So it goes to the Golgi. This is where additional folding takes place and then it gets shipped out. Um, and I do want to remind you guys too, one thing that... Uh, it's very seldomly shown um, is these vesicles are actually riding on cytoskeleton uh, and it takes some ATP to actually get those vesicles to kind of cruise out. So they're not just gonna arbitrarily find their way out, they're riding on a cytoskeleton. It takes some ATP to ship these things out and shipping this protein out would be that process known as exocytosis. So, Key things again, just fixate on what is the point of the endomembrane system. You're shipping proteins out of the cell or you're trying to get a protein to the cell membrane. Um, if, and again, this is only in eukaryotic cells because you have these membrane bound organelles uh, and those vesicles are riding on the side of skeleton. So um, just to kind of further the point, um, other reminders about the endoplasmic reticulum is what does the smooth ER do? Uh, remember, uh, the endoplasmic reticulum, there's the smooth and the rough. Rough ER has the ribosomes making the proteins, but the key thing about the smooth ER or the SER, right? That's what that SER stands for, is the smooth ER. That's where lipids are going to be synthesized. So um, things like additional phospholipids for the cell membrane, that's where that is going to be assembled. Um, other than that, um, key things uh, would be lysosomes, things that have these hydrolytic enzymes. Uh, really one of the key things here is that why would the endomembrane uh, system be used for this? So this is showing you a lysosome right here, this thing in purple. Um, so if that's your lysosome, why does that have to go through the endomembrane system? Um, so why does it use that endomembrane system? It's because these are gonna have digestive enzymes uh, and it needs some protection, otherwise it would just be digesting everything. So the key word here is compartmentalization. Um, it's gonna compartmentalize those enzymes so they're not actually gonna be doing any damage unless it's specific uh, to digesting something. So that's why specific proteins actually go through the endomembrane system and do stay there. Um, 
I also want to remind you too, um, if I didn't cover it um, previously or if you have forgotten, if we take a step back, um, if I had a ribosome, um, let's say that this is a, I'm drawing these over here. Let's say that these are free ribosomes. We're calling them free because they're not bound to the rough ER. So these ribosomes are gonna make proteins that stay inside the cell. So those proteins are gonna stay inside the cell. Uh, and why? Well, again, they don't have any part of the ER to actually take off to make its own vesicle. So uh, it makes sense that uh, the RNA will find its way there. Um, so the key thing is uh, you're shipping proteins out of the cell. So one of the bigger things for chapter six. Um, mitochondria and chloroplasts, we have uh, chapter nine and 10 that I'll go over uh, in a couple of days. But really the key thing here, I think everybody knows about the mitochondria, you have the two membranes, that's where you make the bulk of your ATP. Uh, we talk about chloroplast. Um, they have the uh, organelle or the specific enzymes and the components to make ATP, but as well as make glucose. So uh, that's gonna be specific uh, for chapters nine and 10. But both of them have two membranes uh, in terms of the endosymbiotic theory. So I'll cover that at the end of this video. Um, key things about cytoskeleton uh, that you guys would have to know. Uh, again, key things is that it's specific to eukaryotes. Um, centrosomes and centrioles, remember those are those little churro looking things that are gonna be typically used for mitosis. Again, that's where your microtubules come out. Um, other than that, I think for the most part, it is relatively straightforward, uh, but this is just showing you a picture uh, right here of a vesicle. Like let's say this is gonna be carrying a protein Right, if you're trying to ship out a protein, it's actually riding on uh, a microtubule. Uh, it takes ATP, it is a form of active transport, that protein's getting shipped out. Um, last things about the structure um, would again be, if we're talking about a eukaryotic cell, um, cell wall, uh, remember that there's a little tiny gaps um, within the cell wall. And if we're talking about those gaps, um, those are gonna be plasma desmata that's gonna let ion exchange from one cell to the next. Um, but these are just showing you the types of junctions that cells can have. Uh, if we look at these gap junctions, those are relatively large. Those allow for molecules to pass back and forth. Uh, desmosomes are going to allow for some flexibility, uh, from cell to cell. Um, and then tight junctions, just as the name implies, um, it's going to just basically provide a very rigid, uh, anchoring of cell to cell. So the last and key thing, <coughs> excuse me, about chapter six was this idea of endosymbiosis. Now, evolution is taken off of the AP exam for this year, but I still feel like it's worth our time to kind of discuss. Uh, it's just stating that back in time, it was just this cell that had these interfoldings. It engulfed a bacteria that was really, really good uh, at making ATP. And as it engulfed it, that's where your mitochondrion got your second membrane. Uh, and evidence is that the DNA in the mitochondria is actually gonna be different than the DNA in the nucleus. Um, furthermore, if it engulfed another uh, prokaryotic cell or cyanobacteria that's really, really good at making uh, glucose, uh, that became a plant cell. So that was the kind of the key thing for chapter six. Um, so that's uh, kind of a quick, basic overview of key things from uh, this chapter. Uh, we'll see you in chapter seven.